Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're gonna to be discussing Mac security essentials. We're gonna be keeping your Mac safe with basic free apps, firewalls, antivirus software, and even stuff built into your Mac OS. So let's get started. First up, what you wanna do is go into system preferences. Now this is a bit complicated to new users, but I'm gonna break it down. And I'm gonna show you an area called sharing. This is the first thing you wanna do. On the left there, you can see lots of services. What you wanna do is make sure they are all off if you're not using them. For example, screen sharing. Your mate can easily enable this behind your back and it will allow them to see what is on your screen and even log in remotely from the network and go into your Mac. File sharing will allow other people to log into your Mac and have access to all of the files on it. Now these are great tools if you're collaborating with someone that you know, but if this is enabled needlessly on a public Wi-Fi, you are in trouble. Bluetooth sharing, that guy is unnecessary. No one really sends Bluetooth files anymore, unless maybe you're on Android and you don't have AirDrop. Maybe that's a good necessity there. But in case you don't know, Bluetooth is very insecure. Every single macOS update, they always have a security fix for Bluetooth. So disable it if you can, even better. If you're not using Bluetooth, just turn it off. Needless radiation is happening with Bluetooth enabled. Turn it off, live a happier life. But if you are using an external Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, you'll need it for that kind of area. So basically, disable the services if you don't need it. Regarding Bluetooth, let's go into the Bluetooth section. Advanced. Now, this bottom option, okay, allow Bluetooth devices to wake this computer. This has been the pain of my life. Now, I use a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, so I have this option enabled because it's kind of cool being able to wake the computer up using my keyboard and mouse. But sometimes when I put the Mac in a car, in a boot, I can finish driving up and I see that my Mac's fans are whirring like crazy because somehow a Bluetooth device, maybe external headphones or something like that, has activated the computer behind my back and it's turned it on and it's obviously too hot for the case I've been carrying it in. So if you are going on road trips and you want to keep your Mac safe from Bluetooth people, disable that option. Now we're going to go into some cooler sections and this is security and privacy. Basic settings over here. General, you want to jump into Firewall. Now for newer Macs with T2 chips, Firewall is a little bit redundant, however, by enabling it, you do get an additional layer of security. And for older Macs in particular, what it does is it encrypts all of your data at the cost of performance. Now, newer Macs won't cost performance, but it will allow you to not decrypt the data as soon as you turn it on. You have to enter your password first, but older Macs, it will give you encryption to your data. What that means is that if someone steals your Mac, they can take out your hard drive. All of the data will be like garbled and they'd have to figure out how to decrypt the data before they have access to it. And obviously the big guys will be able to hack through it all the way through, but most people won't be able to. So enable it if you have anything a bit dodgy on your Mac that you want to keep a bit secure, slightly more secure than normal. Keep it disabled if you want maximum performance. Now we're going to go into, actually, I'm going to skip over the firewall. I'm going to go into privacy first. Privacy, this is Catalina, it is an amazing, amazing section for your Mac. You don't need to allow applications to have access to all of your files and folders, your camera, your photos. You can just enable and disable the options for you. Pretty easy to understand. But firewall is where most people don't understand what's going on now. Firewall is a layer, a great barrier wall between the network, the internet, and your Mac. Mac OS's firewall, the way it works is it stops applications receiving connections from the big bad wild west. So if you enable your firewall here and turn it on, some applications, well, most applications will still work exactly the same because it's pretty intelligent, very easy option to enable, but some applications will have issues in which case you go into firewall options and you can manually choose whether you want to block incoming connections or allow them. Personally, I block everything because I don't, applications, why, why are remote people talking to my applications? It's unnecessary for my use case. However, if you're doing some sort of farming activity, for example, you have a render farm and you have lots of computers talking to each other, you probably want to enable maybe compressor manually, all that kind of stuff. So basically, if an application isn't working for some reason, you can enable it. You can also allow built-in software to receive incoming connections. Apple software is usually safe. And signed software, this is applications that Apple approve of. They're usually safe. There is a third option there, stealth mode. What that means is other applications just pinging the network, trying to see what's available. Your Mac won't respond to it. Obviously there are ways for it to still figure out who you are, but the basic protocols, it won't say, hey, I'm here, hey, I'm here, please start to hack me. So enable stealth mode and dis enable the firewall and disable incoming connections if you don't need it. But of course, if you run into any issues, this is the section to check out and change the settings to it. 
So these are some nice built-in tools in macOS and very simple to set up to make your Mac more secure. But I'm gonna go into free, and this one's actually free and open source. And if you want a guide on how to build this piece of software, check out my coding channel, x -Ray. I'll go through and I'll show you how to set up yourself. Open source software is awesome because it means you have access to the source code, which means you can actually see if the application is doing something malicious behind your back. You can, of course, just hit the download button here and trust their word for it. This guy's an ex-NSA hacker, top dude, really cool guy. He has uh, so much software for free on his, on his webpage. Check it out. Do not disturb, knock, knock, task explore. Just really all round safe kind of dude. But of course, investigate the code yourself. Find out if it's good for you. But this is a firewall and this is an advanced firewall. What it does is it adds extra bit of security that you don't get on macOS. And the extra bit of security is it helps you control the applications communicating to the internet. So while the Mac OS firewall blocks the internet talking to your software, this one can block the software talking to the internet. And in today's world, applications, they love phoning home. They're constantly grabbing as much data as they can about you, analytics, and sending it to their servers. I don't approve of that. I want a bit of privacy. Why are you potentially having access to my photos? And if you want behind my back, you can upload it. Potentially having access to my camera uploading that. It's a whole big bad world. So this is a piece of software that you can use and make your Mac awesome. I'll show you how it works here. It's got a shield here while you install it. You have to reset your Mac after you install it, all that kind of stuff. But check it out. You get all of the applications on your Mac. You can even do a filter. Let's just do virus over here. Now I've blocked two antivirus softwares from access to the internet because I don't trust antivirus software. I'll explain why in a second. But you can go ahead and approve and disapprove applications as they try to access the internet. Other firewalls, paid ones that I've used in the past, they actually say it's trying to access this website. It's trying to access this URL. It's trying to access this IP address. And you can have a more advanced filtration system to say, allow it to access Apple, but don't allow it to access xyz.com. Allow it to access this, but don't allow it to access the adverts. So. It doesn't have that feature, but again, what you're getting with this one is it's free and it's open source, so you can build on it. Settings to go through here, preferences. I usually disable update checks now. Update checks are amazing because if there's any patches or issues with this piece of software, it can push out an update to you and you can get the latest version. I prefer to manually check because I want to limit the amount of internet access attempts that I have in general. So this piece of software is amazing and you can see it in action right here because I'm going to be talking about antivirus software. Now I know Max, Max, they don't get viruses. That is the myth. That is the rumor. We've got Gatekeeper, all this kind of cool stuff. But nowadays, because Macs are awesome, hackers are targeting Macs for viruses. So if, you know, you can get a virus. It happens. It happens in the world. So I have two and this is free antivirus software you can access and I've got these guys straight from the app store. So the first one here is called Bitdefender. It's free. They have a plus edition, $50. Buy it if you want to use it. And look at it right there. I've just tried to open the application for the first time and boom, it's saying it's trying to connect to nimbus.bitdefender.net. Now, I'm pretty sure this antivirus software is safe to upload the analytics and information to it. And actually you will need to use the internet to update the latest virus definitions, the latest virus information out there for your Mac. So you can temporarily allow it. But the good thing about having a firewall is that you can allow it on your terms. So here it's saying, look guys, threat information is outdated. You can go in and click update now. Once you click update now, it'll go ahead and access the server and download the virus definitions. But you notice, even when I launched it for the first time, it was accessing the internet. What is it doing during that internet access? I don't know. Obviously, it's, as I said, it's probably safe. It's probably just saying the software has been used once and it's tallying on and finding out how many people in the world are using its piece of software. But you really want to only be enabling it when you're updating your virus definitions and not before. That's my personal opinion. The second piece of software I use is called Virus Barrier. And again, this is another free one. When you hit open, look at that. Another alert saying it wants to access the internet. It wants to access intogodownload.com. And I can temporarily allow it. And it'll go ahead and also update the latest definitions. But, you know, it's just something about not having that piece of control to say, update it when I ask you. Why is it always trying to access the internet behind your back? So just having a firewall 
as well as controlling these antivirus software is great. Now I do also use an open source antivirus software, but it's command line based, so I'm not gonna go into it on this video. But the reason why I use these two pieces of software is because I found that if I use them in tandem, I find all of the viruses. For example, when I use Bitdefender, I found some viruses, and when I use the other one, I found some other viruses on my Mac. Obviously I knew there were viruses because there were specific pieces of software that I knew they had viruses in. It was a test, but I found that you get more coverage more control on finding viruses if you have two of them. And there are a lot of false positives. Sometimes it says a JavaScript file has a virus, one that I wrote myself. So just make sure you don't automatically delete your files, you quarantine them, and then you can manually approve or disapprove as it goes. And these are pretty easy to, to, you know, to use. Scan critical locations, it'll scan the critical locations. Deep system scan, it'll scan your whole hard drive. And uh, custom location, you know, scan your own stuff. And get here, start scan. You can enable daily scanning if you know you're a bit worried about that kind of stuff but personally i like doing everything manually and that's my opinion and i hope you guys found this useful look at that beautiful blob on the screen he's looking at me he's saying i'm uploading your data in the background because i know you don't have a firewall but unlucky for you i actually have a firewall so stop looking at me bro so i hope you found this video useful what kind of protection do you guys use what have i missed have you found this video useful and of course hope you guys enjoyed the show